After months of stalling, Turkey's president has agreed to clear the way for ratification of Sweden's NATO membership bid. Completing Sweden's accession to NATO is an historic step that benefits the security of all NATO allies at this critical time. Why was Turkey's president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, determined to use his veto power to block Sweden and Finland from joining NATO? After Russia invaded Ukraine, its neighboring countries like Finland and Sweden felt threatened. What if Russia decided to invade them too? This fear led them to an official application to join NATO. But there was a catch. They could not join NATO unless all NATO members accepted. Simply, everyone had veto power, and President Erdogan knew how to use it. He declared he would use his veto power and block Finland and Sweden's way toward NATO. But if Finland and Sweden accepted what Turkey wanted, Turkey would not use its veto power, Erdogan said. Wait, what was Turkey hoping to achieve by strong-arming them? Well, blocking and clearing Sweden and Finland's way to NATO was not as simple as you had thought. Watch this video to know how President Erdogan used his signature tactic of authoritarian gambit to get what he wanted. Let's get started. Chapter 1. The Time Tactic Timing in this case gave Turkey the upper hand. President Erdogan knew that both Finland and Sweden were more than eager to join NATO as soon as they could. For that, they would be more flexible than ever to accept Turkey's terms. Everyone knew Turkey might be a problem for Finland and Sweden's membership in NATO. It was due to a number of reasons, which you will know about within a few minutes of this video. But why did Finland and Sweden want to join NATO at that particular time? Well, the invasion of Ukraine, orchestrated by Vladimir Putin, has had a profound impact on the stability of Northern Europe, with Sweden and Finland bearing the brunt of its consequences. Former Finnish Prime Minister Alexander Stubb gravely emphasized that Finland's inevitable decision to align with an alliance followed Russia's invasion of Ukraine. This invasion brought melancholic memories of the past. For the people of Finland, the current conflict evoked haunting memories of the historical Soviet invasion of 1939. Despite the brave resistance displayed by the Finnish army during that time, they were compelled to relinquish the Karelia region to Russia, resulting in a significant territorial loss. This unsettling parallel from history instills deep concern among Finns regarding the extensive border they share with Russia, exacerbating fears of potential repercussions in the wake of the situation in Ukraine. Sweden, too, faced serious apprehensions about its security. In 2013, the simulated attack on Stockholm by Russian bomber planes exposed critical weaknesses in Sweden's military preparedness, necessitating urgent assistance from NATO to address the looming threat. The subsequent reports of a Russian submarine lurking near the Stockholm archipelago in the following year further intensified Sweden's sense of vulnerability. And the Russian invasion of Ukraine gave the final blow to Sweden's insecurity. For Finland and Sweden, security has become the priority now. And NATO can offer that. Article 5 of NATO says that any attack on any NATO member will be considered an attack on all members. Hence, the militaries and security forces of all members will unite and fight the invading country. Perhaps this article will never be used as becoming a NATO member takes a country off the fear equation. And they want that. From remaining neutral to being willing to become NATO members, fear played a crucial role and Turkey's president was keeping his eye on that. He knew strong-arming Finland and Sweden could bring benefits to Turkey, and eventually, he would clear their path at the end. Chapter 2. Turkey's Demands The decision by Erdogan to obstruct Finland and Sweden's efforts to join NATO was influenced by several crucial factors. One of the most prominent factors is Ankara's reservations concerning Sweden's handling of groups like the Kurdistan Workers' Party. It should be noted that the European Union and the United States classify this organization as terrorist. For Turkey, this group is a terrorist organization and a threat to Turkey's sovereignty as they can ignite a rebellion. President Erdogan, hence, said that he will use the veto power to block Finland and Sweden's path to NATO unless they cooperate. But Sweden refused to assist in any way to hand over the Kurds to Turkey, which further exacerbated the situation. It appeared that Sweden will never become a NATO member unless it accepts Turkey's demands. Time has proven that. 
Turkey has also been raising objections to individuals and organizations, like followers of preacher Fethullah Gulen, that it considers terrorists. The presence of Sweden's influential Kurdish diaspora openly displaying PKK flags during regular demonstrations adds to Ankara's growing apprehensions. The perception that Sweden allows PKK propaganda to thrive due to lenient anti-terrorist laws and expansive freedom of speech protections further deepens Turkey's concerns. And Turkey wants Sweden to back off from this position. It wants Sweden to either hand over these individuals or allow Turkey to take charge. Doing so will make President Erdogan more popular in Turkey than ever before. Since the Kurdistan Workers' Party is seen as an ultra-nationalist party in Turkey and a threat, cutting its roots means a secure political future. And President Erdogan wants this. But that's not all. Ankara has strategic interests linked to its aspiration to acquire F-16 fighter jets and modernization kits from the United States. Turkey's exclusion from the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter Consortium following its purchase of the Russian S-400 anti-aircraft missile system has left the nation with critical gaps in military capabilities. Using the prospect of NATO enlargement as leverage, Turkey aims to secure the desired arms deal. What's more, Erdogan wants the EU to accept Turkey as its member, in return for accepting Sweden into NATO. President Erdogan wanted all these demands to be fulfilled if Sweden and Finland were ever to join NATO. Before we continue any further, tell us, are you enjoying the video? If yes, please like the video to support us. Chapter 3. Sweden and the U.S. Coaxing After meetings with the NATO Secretary General, officials of Sweden and indirect U.S. involvement, Turkey decided not to use veto power against Sweden and Finland. But how? Well, this came after Sweden accepted to do whatever Turkey demanded. Not only that, but the U.S. had to be involved and offer defense deals to Turkey to finally get a green light. The approval came following closed-door negotiations between NATO chief Jen Stoltenberg and the leaders of both countries. Perhaps unofficially, the deal was that Turkey won't use its veto power against Sweden and Finland in return for getting F-16 jets and change of Sweden's law against Kurds. What happened next proved this. After Turkey announced that it was good with Sweden's membership, the U.S. government swiftly declared its intention to transfer F-16 fighter jets to Turkey. This move appears to be a reciprocal gesture, with Turkey supporting Sweden's bid to join NATO. Moreover, the Pentagon disclosed a phone call between the U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin and Turkish Defense Minister Yasser Guler implying a connection between Sweden's NATO membership and ongoing U.S.-Turkey defense discussions. But that's not it. Sweden, the main player, had to commit to addressing Ankara's security concerns through trilateral dialogues involving NATO. Sweden also reaffirmed its continued efforts to combat terrorism and pledged not to support Kurdish fighter groups or the organization labeled as the Fethullah Terror Organization. Now that's not all. Yes, Turkey got more than what it had demanded. Stockholm assured active support for two critical areas of concern for Ankara, the modernization of the EU-Turkey Customs Union and visa liberalization. Turkey had voiced concerns about the rising number of rejected Schengen visa applications for its citizens and consistently demanded visa-free travel to Europe. And now, this matter has been resolved. Turks will be able to travel visa-free to Europe's Schengen area after all due diligence is completed. If you feel you like these types of videos, subscribe to our channel for more on geopolitics, changing world order, and power landscape. Chapter 4. Genius Strategy and Legacy Turkey's demands could never have been fulfilled even if it had used all its power. If it thought Sweden was harboring the Kurd terrorists, it could only get them back by using military means. Though fixing defense deals with the U.S., getting F-16 fighter jets and visa-free travel in Europe's Schengen area was out of the question. But with this genius strategy, President Erdogan has showcased what he can do. Without threatening to go to war or sanctions, just by saying only a few words, he has gotten what nobody could imagine. And this tactic will be added to the modern authoritarian handbook, leaving a legacy. However, fear persists that President Erdogan's strategy will inspire other authoritarians, changing diplomacy and international politics forever. Now tell us, 
Will Erdogan's tactics set an example for authoritarians like President Vladimir Putin and President Xi Jinping? Will we see them strong-arming countries to achieve what they want? Let us know your take on how shrewdly Erdogan played and how it could backfire. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. This is the channel where you can have all the crux about geopolitical subjects, which intentionally or unintentionally get ignored in the mainstream media. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.